good afternoon to each and every one of you. Praise God we're able to do this one once more and uh and two Wednesdays in a row. So God is good. God is forever present and he is always, always in your life if you'll allow him to. So thank God for where he's brought us this week and how he's blessed and anointed in so many ways and, and helped so much. So before we get into it tonight, let's just let's uh let's pray, let's just ask God to help some of these. We've had a lot of sickness that are in uh it's in our churches. We have a lot of sickness that's at work too where I where I work, so uh just ask God to touch these people. God knows who they are. You may forget one or two, but praise God, he knows each and every one. And if we pray in that manner that God knows, but give God those people and give God the the upper hand, just as what we talked about last Sunday about Job, and we're going to continue to talk about Job, or not Sunday, <laughs> I'm sorry, last Wednesday about Job, and we're going to continue to talk this Wednesday about Job also. So praise God for that. He is he always knows, but he's always ready and wanting us to call upon him. So, but let's just pray for our, our churches, uh, all the the ministers across this land, um, all the 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 pastors. You know, the, the ones that are right here and near and dear to us are pastor. And I know by the time that some of you seen this, it may already be through and finished. But let's pray for our pastor. You know, he does have a a small procedure coming up and it will be Wednesday this is uh thir or Tuesday night that I am recording this so we're going to pray for him praise God and he is he's you know I call him dad all the time and I mean it and thank God for him so pray for him and pray for all the ones that are called to teach and preach God's word cuz you know it sometimes it gets rough sometimes the plowing Hits a few rocks to us, but God's just putting us on that better path. He has a plan and He has a will that is far greater. So, pray for our uh, all of our our nation and pray for Israel. And let's just continue to pray one for another and our lost loved ones. Dear Heavenly Father, I praise Your precious name, God, for what You've done, Father, for me, God. Thank You, God, for how how blessed, Lord God, I am, Lord. Father, for the touch, God, of grace, God, and the touch, God, of mercy, Father, that You've always followed around, God, with me, God, knowing that I'd need it, Father. But, Father, Lord God, when I called out, God, that You're right there. So, Father, Lord God, we're calling out, God, right now, Father, for You to touch these people, God, that are sick and afflicted. Lord God, that may have these 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 bugs or whatever it may be going around, Father, but it is quite fierce, God, upon them, God. I pray, God, that you touch them, God. You give them an anointing, God, and you help them, Lord God, just by those precious stripes that are placed on Christ's back, Father, that your word tells us, God, that that is the only place that we seek, God, that our healing, God, comes from, and that is by those precious stripes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, Father, for your blood also, Lord, that you shed for me, that you shed for your children, Father, to be able to have that precious eternal life, God, our salvation, Lord God, in each and every way. Touch pastor, God, and I pray, God, an almighty anointing, God, a peace, Lord God, a guidance, God, of the surgeon's hand, Father, and I pray, God, in each and every way, God, that you help him, God, the Father, Lord God, as he comes in, God, and he comes out, Father, Lord God, in each and every way, Father, that your Holy Ghost be manifest in him, and Lord God, that the Holy Ghost, God, would be forever flooded, God, on whoever is in that room, God, that it would be for an uplifting, it would be for a testimony, and Lord God, it would be for a touch of all lives, God, that are around. Anoint God and direct, Father, and touch Mary Jane, Father, that is right beside his side, God, in each and every way. God, give her an uplifting, Father, and a glow, Lord God, that would be used, God, for your will. And I ask you, God, to touch all the ones of God across this land, God. Touch the, the ministers, God, the teachers, God, whoever they may be, Father, the Lord God, that they're trying to get your word out. Anoint them, God. And help them, God, with a fierceness, God, that they would have, God, just according, God, to your will and your works, God, and your glory, Father, for it is yours that we would give back, God, unto you, Father, that would not be for our glory, but yours. Lord, touch our lost loved ones, God. I pray, God, in Jesus' name, God, that you touch them, God, and do what it takes, God, to bring them, God, unto you. Anoint them, Father. Call them, Lord God, to your name and to your kingdom, Father. Guide us and direct us, Father, and not, Father. I pray, God, that you move me aside. Lord God, that your will come. 
in your will, God, and your word, God, would work forth, God, just as you'd see it to do, Father, for your glory and for your honor, not mine, God. Let us praise you and let us thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. So tonight, we're going to talk about, or we're going to be in Job chapter 42. We talked about, uh, we was in Job 40 last Wednesday, and um, we talked just about how Job was getting pretty testy with God, that he was he was to the point where he was attempting to come at God, but God knew Job's heart. God knew that Job didn't know what he was stepping in, didn't know what he was getting to. So God proved a point. God showed him exactly how mighty and how wonderful and how powerful he is. So now, after all of that has happened in uh, 40, or 40 and 41, because he continues in 41 and talks about more of the beast of the field and entails more about what we talked about last Wednesday. So now we're in 42. Now we're getting to this point right here where Job is like, whoa. What a God. Whoa. Wow. You know, his, his, his spirit is stirred. He's, he's to the point, we talked about the, um, Last week that he was at the point that he was kind of like, okay, I hit a nerve with God. I don't think I should have done that. But he still was at that point where he wasn't honestly ready to completely back, in, back down either. But now he's at this point. Now he is there and knows. So let us read in, in uh, chapter 42 and verse 1. Then Job answered, the Lord and said, I know that thou canst do everything. Now he's not saying can't do. He's saying canst. So that's can do pretty much is what that means. I know that thou canst do everything and that no thought can be withholden from thee. Who is he that hideth counsel? without knowledge. Therefore I have uttered that I understood not things too wonderful for me, which I knew not. God knows so much. He knows the next sentence that I'm going to say before I even say it. He knows the next thought that could pop in your mind or that will pop in your mind before you ever think it. God knows the paths that he's got. Jeremiah tells us that. He wants to give you an expected end. But in order to get that expected end, we've got to do these things that Job is getting and coming to do now. You know, I think it's Paul. I know I get Peter and Paul mixed up so awful, and it does aggravate me in a few times. It says that I've got to die daily. And I do. I do. I've got to come to God daily and say, Lord, forgive me for where I failed. And this is where we're getting at now. But those things are so wonderful. God knows how much and how great we have. And how what He has in store for us. And how mighty He is. And that is what He's talking about. He says, I can't even fathom pretty much. I can't understand all of these things. Because it is so great and so such a magnitude that point blank you just can't understand. I know I've said that before. But listen as we go on. Here I beseech thee, and I will speak. I will demand of thee, and declare thou unto me. I have heard of thee by hearing of the ear, but now my eye seeth. So he has opened, God has opened Job's eye, or eyes. He has shown him exactly how mighty he is. Wherefore I arbor myself, and I repent in the dust and ashes. He made that he he realized, Whoa, well, I've made I've made these mistakes. You know, I was I was the one that that was trying to walk a straight and narrow, but I still made those mistakes and Lord forgive me for where I have made them. 
we're no different. You know, we all talk about that they're a sinner's prayer. You know, we fail and fall short. And Lord forbid we do commit a sin. And we do sin. But praise God, we still have the advocate with the Father. And that Jesus Christ died for us. And there, by His blood, our sins are bought and paid for. Now that doesn't mean you go willy-nilly and just do whatever you want to out in this world. There is a point that we cannot come back from. But it's also kind of touched and mentioned here also. Wherefore I arbor myself and repent in dust and ashes. And it was so that after the Lord has spoken these words unto Job, the Lord said unto Eliphaz and Telmite, My wrath is kindled against thee and against thy two friends, for ye have not spoken of me the thing that is right as my servant Job hath. Now these are the friends of Job that tried to come by and I don't know if he was trying to console them at the very first or what, but if you'll read back and go back and and uh, in Job, that these were just almost mocking, and it's getting getting very rough with Job, and they were not in the uplifting manner that we as Christians should be. But putting ourselves in Job's shoes, you know, I think Matthew Henry commented on this to the effect that Job thought that he was going to get fought with this. You know, he was, Job was almost like, these were my faults. I was wrong in their manner. But God comes and shows us right here, he's going to get that revenge for us. He's going <laughs> to, praise God, he's going to make those enemies that try to come against us. As long as we hold fast and stand still, as we're going to talk about right now, in Isaiah in 54 and verse 17. And it says, No weapon is formed against thee shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. So our righteousness is only of Jesus Christ, period. But these things that are trying to come against us, as long as we hold to him, as long as we are a servant of Jesus Christ and having been bought by that blood of Jesus, that is the only way, first and foremost, that we'll ever enter into the kingdom of God. And that is the only way that our sins are forgiven on this earth and in this life. But if we are those things, if we are that servant of Jesus Christ, we've got to be able to do the things that He's asked us to do. I'll give you an example. It was... Monday, you know, when I, everybody and her brother was jumping down him or her's throat. I had my fair share of listening to all the throat jumping that I really wanted to. And I wanted to lash out, I did. I did. Now, I probably said a couple other things that I shouldn't have said. No, they were not bad words or anything such as that. But the tone that I used, I had to ask forgiveness for but I looked at this even in the same way. No, you just, I just asked a simple question to someone. And boy, if it didn't lash out back to me, I didn't know what was going on. But looking at it in a way of that, we've got to be the godly servants that Jesus has called us to be, to follow him. Now, that doesn't mean we're not going to slip up and falter. But if we walk that line and give God the glory and give Him the honor, look what's getting ready to happen here. If we do as Job has done, and he fought, even Job fell upon his face and said, God, I, I need you right there. He says, I, I repent of those things. In verse 8, it says, Therefore, and we're back in Job here in 42, Therefore, take unto you now seven bullocks and seven rams and go to my servant Job. And he just called him servant right there. Don't forget that. And offer up for yourselves a burnt offering. 
and my servant Job shall pray for you. For him I will accept, lest I deal with you after your folly, in that ye have not spoken of me the thing which is right, like my servant Job. God had enough mercy and grace to come back to them and tell them this and say you need to go and do these things. But this is where I was talking about right here. If you don't do these things, it says, at least I deal with you after your folly. We can go to that point. And that point is not the point, not the ledge that you want to try to step off from. It's a long ways down. And you don't know the ending. You don't want to know the ending. But if we fall upon our face and do what God has asked, and He does these things, and He says, I will accept as long as you go to Job. He calls him His servant. Praise God. We just talked about how a servant was up there in the very beginning. But listen right here, this is this is something that come to mind to me, and it hit me just flatter than flatter in a pancake. In Revelations chapter 3 and verse 9, it says, Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which shall say they are Jews, and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. Now, you can take that two ways. You can take that in a way that John was saying from, from Jesus that they'll come fall upon your feet because they know that you are the child of God. Now, or you could take it a different way. And this is the way I choose to take it tonight. And this is the way I think he revealed to me tonight. Is all of those lost loved ones, all of those that are deviling out in the world, and all of those that are needing, just as what's going on to, right here, is, is the friends of Job, you know, he, they got, called him everything in the book, you know, they pretty much told him to curse God and die. But down here, the way I take it in Revelation 3, is that they're going to come to you knowing that you know God. And when you, they come to you knowing that you know God, then you gotta be ready to pray for them. You gotta be ready to pray with them. You gotta be ready to give them that straight and narrow path. Because God has called you, each and every one of you that is right here, that is listen. And if you're covered by the blood of Jesus Christ, then your calling is already assured that someone's gonna know that you serve Jesus Christ. And that God is calling and asking you, when that one comes, why don't you just pray for him? When that one comes up to you and doesn't know right from wrong or is doing the wrong thing or whatever it may be, and they're needing help and you see it on their face bad. Now it may be that God says don't reach out to them, but it may be in your heart that God's wrenching and saying, you're going to have to pray for them. You're going to have to pray for them. Stop what you're doing. Give God the praise. Give God the honor. And pray for that individual. Because that's where we're coming to. Because all of these people that are, are, are bound by Satan. They're either going to have that, that, that one little opportunity to make those things right. Just as what's going on, what happened right here. That uh, Job's friends were. He says, I'm going to read eight verse 8 once more therefore take uh, unto you now seven bullocks and seven rams and go to my servant Job and offer up for yourselves a burnt offering and my servant Job shall pray for you for him will I accept there it is for him I will accept that may be your gateway but over here, on the other side, on the other opposite side of things, 180 degrees. Least I deal with you after your folly. So after your, you get done with all of your good ways that you think are fun, 
that are joking, that are whatever they may be. In that ye have not spoken of me the thing which is right, like my servant Job. Praise God for repentance. Verse 9, we're going to finish up this chapter here. And this is Job 42, verse 9. So, Elphaz, and Termonite, and Bilidad, and Shuat, and Zophar, and Nathamite, went and did according as the Lord commanded them. The Lord also accepted Job. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job. When he prayed for his friends, also the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. We are storing. We're storing our treasures up. Our treasures may not be upon this earth, but we are storing them in such a greater place than we even know down here. So let's store them where they matter the most. Then came there unto him all his brethren and all his sisters and all that they had been of his acquaintance before and did eat bread with him in his house. And they bemoaned him and comforted him over all the evil that the Lord hath brought upon him. Every man also gave him a piece of money and every one an earring of gold. So the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning, for he had fourteen thousand sheep and six thousand camels and a thousand yoke of oxen and a thousand she donkeys. He had also seven sons and three daughters, and he called the name of the first Jemiah and the name of the second Keza and the name of the third Karahapath. And in all the land were no women found so fair as the daughters of Job. And their father gave them inheritance upon uh, among their brethren. After this, Job lived a hundred and forty years and saw his sons and his sons' sons even four generations. So Job died being old and full of days. I wanted to read you all of this tonight for one simple reason. For you to see the outcome of a man that was humbled by God. From a man that had everything on this earth. I mean, he was very, he was very blessed before any of this happened. He was very well off. But I wanted you to see the outcome even of a man that was so well off, brought down so low, and humbled by God. But his grace and his mercy abounded so much further that all of these things we just talked about, he prayed. The highlight of what Job had done for all, whatever he'd done for all his years, the highlight of Job was he prayed. For his friends that mocked him. That scorned him. You know I'm not trying to compare the two. But Job is. In the Old Testament. Jesus was mocked. He was scorned. He was ridiculed. But yet at the end. When he hung on that cross. He told him, he says, and he prayed to the Father, he says, God, forgive them, for they know not what they've done. That right there is the humbleness. To get down to that point, to get to the very lowest that you could possibly be, but still try to advocate for the other one beside of you, and the other one to the left and to the right. For the people that are in need. Church, we got to be ready. We got to be prayed up. We got to be right down where the rubber meets the road. Because this will happen. These people 
are going to come out of that captivity that the devil has tried to keep them in. The ones that you've prayed all so long for. And I know I'm getting lengthy here, but listen. Keep holding on and listen to the rest of this. The ones that you have prayed so hard for, God is going to deliver them from captivity. But it may take the prayer of yours, hand in hand, on your knees, talking to the one that matters the most, talking to God the Father, going through the Son that is making the intercession for you and them. So let us be ready. Let us be extremely ready to pray for these people, for these people to come out of that captivity because God's going to do a mighty work. He has not yet returned because one of two things, in my opinion, we have it. we're not ready as a church to be taken. And he hasn't met his number yet. There's more people out there that will turn from Satan's captivity. I love each and every one of you tonight. Let's pray before we, we uh, let's close in, in a word of prayer before we end this tonight. So praise God for it. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray God that you anoint each and every one, God, that is listening to this, Father. Whatever they are may be going through, Father, Lord God, that they hold on, God. That they are anointed, God, by your grace, Father. That they find that one, Lord God, to just get on their knees, God, with. Father, that prayer partner, Lord God, that can reach the throne, Father. And when they find them, Lord God, Father, I pray, God, that they hold on to it, Lord. That they don't let go of, God, of you, Father. Lord God, that that hand, Father, is just wrenched, God, upon your hand. Father, that we do not let go of you. Lord, guide us, God, and direct us, Father, anoint each and every one of us, God, tonight, Father, and I pray, God, that you anoint all the ones, God, that are watching this. Lord God, that we are ready, Father, that we are prayed up, Father, Lord God, that we can pray, God, truly and honestly and earnestly, Lord, if so, please, Jesus, come quickly. Lord, help us, Father, in this last day. Anoint us, Father, gird us up, Father, and help us, Lord God, to have that, that precious body, Father, and that the one, Father, that you have armored us with, Father, that we would be covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. That our righteousness only comes from Jesus Christ. That is the only way that we can have any righteousness at all. Lord, help us, guide us tonight, Father. Touch all the ones, God, that are sick and afflicted, Lord God, again. Father, I pray, God, touch our pastor, God. And Sister Mary Jane, Father, anoint them, God, with an almighty just touch and anointing, Father. Help them, God, in each and every way. Father, all the ones, God, that are teaching, preaching, and, Father, proclaiming your name. Lift them up. Lift them up, Lord, in Jesus' name we pray. We thank you and we praise you, God, and touch our lost loved ones, God, that they are ready, Father, that they get that, that gut-wrenching feeling, Lord, God, that you do what it takes, Father, to release them, Father, from that captivity, Father of Satan. Lord, anoint us, guide us, and direct us, Father. In Christ's name I do pray. Amen. I love each and every one of you. I pray God gives you the most blessed and precious week. Praise God for each and every one.